Alright, so. Yeah, you, you can probably go now. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Jamie Cho. I've been a Coco fan since. Uh, since I had my MC10, which I know is not Steve York's. Uh, Yay, MC10! <laughs> so that's uh, 83 or 84. And uh, I, I have to say that, you know, definitely not the best of machines, but uh, because it was a failure, it was discounted very quickly, which, you know, enabled my family to afford it. So it kind of worked out well for me. Um, I did move on to a Coco 3 around, uh, I think, Christmas of 86. And I've been uh, toying with it for a really long time. Uh, Coco in OS9 helped me get my first kind of uh, undergraduate research position at uh, C Grant. Uh, at the time, they were using uh, OS9 for their uh, robotic submarine. And I've been kind of in and out of, uh, it was a 68K machine though. <laughs> um, I've been in and out of the uh, Coco world for some time. Uh, more recently, uh, gotten more interested in uh, Coco because of uh, CMOT by uh, Pierre uh, Sarazin, which I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. And uh, I've done a, a few little programs based on that. Uh, you, uh, one was a breakout clone. Uh, I ported uh, Jamie Zawinski's uh, X Dolly clock over to the Coco. And I also ported uh, a mini Lisp over to uh, Coco. Uh, so, uh, I would like to talk today about uh, some things that I've been playing with, and I kind of like to call it uh, Coco at a higher level, higher level computing. So basically what I'd like to do is take uh, all of the advancements that we have seen uh, coming to you know, more modern computers and use that, uh, apply that technology to uh, the Coco. And uh, with that, uh, just ask the question, what if the Coco had higher level uh, computing tools? Uh, definitely there'd be more interest in the Coco platform because it'll be a lot easier to put together you know, more substantial uh, games and programs. Uh, and as a result, there'll be a lot more software written for the Coco, which is always great. And uh, in short, you know, Coco world domination. You know, we, we, <laughs> want, uh, we want to see more Coco stuff and uh, have it take over, you know, all the Commodores and, and, and those things. <laughs> So uh, what are the key attributes of high-level compute tools? Um, well, they should be high-level languages. So, and, and the reason why I have this bias is I'll admit I am not good at assembly language. Uh, I've, I'm a self-taught assembler programmer, but never very good at it. And I kind of realized that I'm never going to be very good at it. The first time I saw some of uh, Alan Hoffman's code, uh, he showed me his code for uh, Invaders 09. I did the uh, MM, MM1 port for it, uh, but when I was studying his code, it was so concise and clear, and I thought, okay, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get to this level, so I'm going to stick with C. Uh, should be well documented. So any tools that we put together for them to be able to uh, get broad adoption, they really have to be super well documented. Uh, this is something that I've, a lesson that I've learned over and over again, both uh, you know, outside of the Cocoa world, uh, inside of work, and just in general, uh, good engineering practice. Uh, definitely, it has to be easy to install, version, and use. And I think all of those are important. So, uh, you know, I struggled, for example, installing Name on my uh, Raspberry Pi. Got so frustrated that I gave up after uh, an embarrassingly long amount of time, I have to admit. Uh, I, I know a gentleman here has actually put together a nice Raspberry Pi package for which I'm very grateful and I'm going to check that out. So it really has to be super easy to use for people to use. Uh, I think versioning is actually very important too. So especially in the Unix world and Linux world where you have new packages coming out every day, uh, we kind of have the same issue uh, in, in the Cocoa world too, which is a good thing actually. Uh, Pierre has done a lot of updates to CMOC some of those uh, updates are breaking changes, uh, and that can cause problems because you don't want your old code to break because you know you want some of those new features. How do you deal with that? And uh, the tool should be just easy to use out of the box, uh, not a lot of configuration. So uh, where are we today? So we do have CMOC. Uh, it's a cross compiler. It runs on many different platforms and it targets the uh, M6809. 
Uh, it actually is more than just the COCO. It also uh, targets Vetrix and uh, some other systems. Uh, Pierre Sarazin, uh, I've contributed some small contributions to CMOC. Pierre is really great to work with. Uh, it's, uh, quoting uh, Pierre, uh, C-like language, uh, I find it much higher level than assembly. And, you know, the truth is assembly language is faster. I mean, there, there, there are people here who can do amazing things with assembler. But, you know, CMOC is pretty good. Uh, it's actually really well documented too, so if you go to either uh, Pierre's website, uh, uh, the details CMOC, or if you go into the uh, .h files, it's very easy to follow everything that's done. Uh, it actually works pretty easily right out of the box. Um, but there are still dependencies, and without going into too, too much detail, uh, I obviously start with the Mac. Uh, the Mac has a kind of weird C, uh, C preprocessor not quite compatible with uh, uh, CMOC. And uh, other issues I found are with uh, LWASM. Uh, it actually generates you know, correct code with just about any version of LWASM. Uh, but I spent three or four hours tracking them down a one byte change between two of my different Macs, just generating slightly different code. It was just because I had a different version of LWASM. So there's like three or four <laughs> hours of my life gone because uh, of, of uh, dependency management. Uh, Dino Sprite is something uh, that I think came out two or three years ago. Uh, Richard, and I'm going to get his last name wrong, Kadekin. Um, it is a, a 2D game engine written for the Coco 3. It handles a lot of stuff, including uh, scrolling. Uh, sprites. Uh, it compiles the sprites, uh, sprites down to code, so it, they're super fast. Uh, it also handles uh, sound in the background, so you get a lot for free. Uh, written by Richard. I've made very, very tiny contributions to it so far. Um, it is object-oriented in design, but it's in assembly language. And again, assembly language is just not my strong suit. Uh, super high performance. Uh, really well documented. Uh, it's, uh, Richard did a great job actually detailing the overall architecture, memory map, and overall structure of things. That made it a lot easier for me to interface it to see. Um, the challenge here is it does require assembly language and lots of dependencies. Uh, so uh, Richard does a lot of cool things. Uh, he Files the sprites using uh, entires using uh, uh, Python. Uh, Python, though, uh, it requires several other dependencies, and it's not the easiest thing to get everything up and running uh, off the bat. And for those who haven't seen it, uh, who here has actually seen uh, has seen it before? So uh, here's. Uh, Here's what you get when you uh, compile it uh, out of the box from his GitHub. It takes a little bit to load, but what it's doing is it's, uh, in this case, he's loading in all of the sprites and some sound. And it creates this kind of large virtual world that you can scroll around in and uh, bounce his balls around. And he actually implemented all of the physics calculations in uh, assembly. And he even has his own uh, uh, click, uh, fix point engine. It's pretty cool. So uh, uh, when I saw this, uh, I was thinking, wow, if only this had a high level language to connect to. And then uh, a few months later, uh, uh, I think Pierre uh, posted his first version of uh, CMOC. And I thought, OK, I have to uh, combine these two things. So how do we bridge the gap? How do we make it super easy to use all of these things? Uh, high, high performance library, uh, high performance uh, language that's easy to use like CMOC. So uh, I, my path for that is Docker. So Docker is typically used in a server setting where you want to actually get all of your dependencies in a single place. Uh, the mantra for Docker is you want to have your infrastructure as code. Uh, your code and data is important. Your server and hardware should not be. 
So it allows you to scale things very, very easy. It also makes it super easy to keep your development, staging, and production environments all in sync. Um, but we can use that same notion to uh, put all of our Cocoa stuff in a single place and version everything together. So uh, in this case, uh, what we want to do is when I put something on GitHub, I want to make it super easy for people to compile without having them to know that, oh, I use this version of LWS and this version of CMOC, this version of Python. And everyone has to get the same results. You know, even though I'm in Massachusetts and a lot of folks are in this uh, Midwest area, and some folks are, uh, like Richard, are in California. So um, we also want to make it easy to support multiple versions of uh, tools. So in particular, uh, you know, I have some things in CMOC that are, you know, generating warnings right now because uh, Pierre added several enhancements and I just haven't had a chance to catch up. We don't want to break uh, old code just because, you know, we're pushing new tools forward. Uh, so, in, in other words, we, we want uh, kind of a Schrodinger uh, cat situation where, you know, the old version is, is both dead and alive at the same time. Uh, Another reason to go for Docker is it really is in demand. So if you guys are looking for kind of an IT uh, switch, uh, Docker is uh, a good thing to know about. It's, uh, it's a bullet point on your resume. And of course, the most important thing is uh, the Docker icon looks like Fudgy the Whale. Anyone know who Fudgy the Whale is? <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> it's the East Coast people. I think only the East Coast people know who Fudgy the Whale is. Is, is it Carvel only an East Coast thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, for, for everyone else, uh, you're really not missing that much. <laughs> uh, it's, it's an ice cream cake. Okay, so uh, what we can do is we can put all of our Cocoa uh, tools into a single image, as long as those Cocoa tools are compatible with Linux. And uh, I put several tools together. And uh, you can access them by just going to uh, my GitHub, uh, git clone, blah, uh, coco dev, and all of a sudden you have CMOC and LWS and a whole bunch of other tools installed. And it'll just work right out of the box. <coughs> so you may want to actually have a different version of the tool because you, know, you haven't had a chance to, to catch up with all, all of Pierre's changes. <coughs> so that's OK. Uh, just clone it again. And you can uh, check out an older version of my uh, uh, Cocoa development environment, and boom, you'll have a different version of CMOC and a different version of LWS, and, and uh, you know you can go up and down uh, as freely as you want. So this is a case where you know you can have both your old version and your new version, and everything existing on your on a single machine. Uh, you can also package up your code so it's super easy for people to compile. Uh, the easier it is for you to get people up and running to compile your code, uh, the more adoption it'll get. And so in this case, uh, you just want to create a little build file. And I know this looks like alphabet soup, but uh, you know, Docker takes a little bit to, to get your head around. Uh, but once you do that, then anyone can just uh, download your code and type build, and boom, they'll, they'll have a, a built image. Um, something I didn't uh, touch on here, uh, Docker is compatible with Linux, Mac, and Windows. I have not been successful at getting it running on Windows, but it allegedly uh, runs. And so uh, this will actually give you cross-platform against uh, the three you know, major platforms. Uh, probably not work, won't work so well on Raspberry Pi because there is like an x86 dependency, but uh, you know, that's, that's where that's at. Um, so uh, I know this is really hard to read, but it's the same idea. Uh, I have lots of different things on GitHub that you can just uh, clone the, bit, uh, the uh, GitHub repo and just type build, build, and it'll just work. Um, DinoSprite is the last one. So DinoSprite is the trickiest one to get working because it does have a lot more dependencies. Uh, but you know, once you get it up and running, uh, you also have a great game engine. Uh, and com uh, combine that with CMOC, it's very easy to put something together uh, very quickly that's fairly impressive. 
So uh, I spent a uh, good part of yesterday uh, putting a de demo together. And really, it's been less than one day of work to put something together. And I just want to show you uh, what I did and uh, you know, uh, how to do it and show, show you a quick demo. So this is all based on a, a Docker environment, CMOC, and uh, um, uh, DinoSprite. So let's do it. All right. So uh, the first thing you have to do is edit metadata, which is usually the, the least fun kind of stuff to do, but uh, it's good to do it early, just get off to a good start. So basically, we have to make uh, some small edits. Uh, we want to make sure that the name of the disk image that we generate makes sense, and, as well as the files. So here, we just uh, I'm doing a uh, ghosts and goblins kind of demo. So uh, I just name things appropriately. Uh, change the uh, readme.bass.txt. Uh, uh, Richard actually put together something where you can put in uh, credits and stuff like that. So I can at least credit all the websites I, I pulled the images from. And then uh, update assets. Uh, there's just a main menu that, that has to get updated. I'm, I'm just going to go through this stuff very quickly. Uh, there are 11 main steps, and then I'll, I'll get to the good stuff. Uh, have some uh, intro graphics to, to do. So uh, when things start up uh, at each level, uh, there's just a little image that you want to show, and uh, so you just have to update some graphics here. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, really, it's just uh, updating some graphics. Uh, because I don't have uh, John Strong's cool uh, icon tool, uh, I take images and I kind of manually reduce them. Uh, so you'll, you'll notice that the images look like it's uh, done with a very crude, you know, kind of image reduction. That's because I, I don't have John Strong's uh, icon icon tool yet. Uh, this is uh, where things get a little bit more involved. We actually have to build up a level. The first concept is there's a, a level file, and I know this is incredibly hard to read, uh, but the, le the level file has a few main concepts. One is it has a tile map, and a tile map in this case is just a large uh, GIF image, and uh, if it's properly tiled up, uh, uh, Dino Sprite will actually automatically figure out what those tiles are and compile it down to uh, another text file. Um, you also have to specify uh, things like a name, uh, object groups. So you want to specify what objects, so like good guys and bad guys, you know, the bats, the zombies, stuff like that. You have to specify them all, uh, all in this file. In this case, I just have a single object group. Uh, I only had enough time to move our, uh, move our hero around. And so there's just one object group. Uh, I started with the number two. Um, and here you can actually see uh, this is where the uh, definition of the hero is, uh, the starting point. And I know it's really hard to see. Uh, is there a place I can actually share the slides after this is done? Yeah, sure. And we can also turn down a few of the lights. It's, it's, it's a tiny font regardless. It's, 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 it's really small. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll need the slides. Yeah. Can you pass those around? They're actually over in the other corner. So um, after you s put the basic definitions together, you actually have to create some level code. In this case, we can start out really, really simple. We basically have a level in it and uh, calculate new background, uh, which we'll fill in later. To be honest, this is a bit of a hack uh, to make sure that uh, Dino Sprite, uh, sorry, uh, CMOC doesn't optimize this stuff out. Uh, I'm working on something cleaner, but uh, we have a hack for now. Uh, the next step is we have to create uh, some graphics. Uh, here, what I did was I, I s took some graphics from uh, the internet. I interleaved both the level graphics as well as the um, uh, sprites onto a single image. Uh, you have to specify what you want to use for transparent color. And uh, again, I use reduce image, uh, which is just a little script that I created to re reduce the number of colors down to 16. Uh, again, I need a, a more proper uh, editing tool for uh, low color uh, images. Uh, uh, next step, you actually have to create the graphics uh, and specify the graphics for uh, uh, 
In this case, this is specifying the, um, uh, what is this location? I think this is uh, mistitled here. Uh, basically, what this, this is doing is uh, specifying where in that large image the hero is. Uh, we s let's start simple. We'll start with a single, uh, single sprite. Otherwise, it, it gets really confusing quickly. Um, we have to create basic uh, object code. And again, real, I know it's really hard to see. There's not a lot to it. You have to initialize the object. Uh, there's a reactivation. And there's an update. Uh, most of the real work is going to happen in the update. And again, we have this kind of ugly hack here to make sure CMOC doesn't uh, delete the code. Uh, a .h file, uh, basically you have a data structure here where you put any state. Uh, I start with a very simple sprite index. Uh, we only have one sprite to find so far, but we want to animate them a little bit. And uh, the sprite index will help us out. Um, so next steps, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be iteratively developing. Uh, at this point, you'll want to add more things. So we'll add more sprites. You want to add some joystick code. Uh, uh, there's a joystick sampling mode. Uh, Steve, yesterday in his talk, he was talking about the difficulties of you know, doing joystick stuff and sound on the Coco. Uh, Dino Sprite has some of those same issues, and there are different modes that you can use for sampling the joystick to get rid of some of the popping noise. Uh, that's, a, that's a Coco limitation it's trying to work around. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we want some scrolling. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. You just have to set some global variables <coughs> for that. And then uh, add some sound. And basically, all that amounts to is you put a wave file into the right place, and you call play sound, and it'll play the sound for you. So went through this very quickly. Uh, it's better just to actually see it in action. So let me uh, see if I can get that running right now. So this was about uh, one day of work. And oops. So what it's doing, uh, it's loading the uh, uh, level data. And there's a little uh, picture there to start with. Uh, again, it's uh, dithered down because uh, you Are know, those fonts built in, or do you have to generate those fonts? Uh, Richard put those fonts in. Yeah. OK. They're, they're pretty nice. Yeah, it's nice. Very arcadey. Wow, that's nice, man. That's really nice. So, uh, is it parallaxing? Down in front. <laughs> uh, no, that, that costs extra. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's it's not that's too very bad. Very smooth. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's all all Richard's work, uh, to be yeah. honest. To, to that's make really it. good. Uh, so it's probably less than 50 lines of C code. Uh, a lot of work to compile all the sprites and stuff like that together. But this is how I see us being able to put together really complex games collaboratively, and uh, you know, be able to do it faster than uh, faster than ever. Um, we have all of these really cool tools, and uh, so I'd really love to be able to take advantage of them. Oh, and sound, of course. So nice. uh, it uh, it actually supports up to two uh, simultaneous sounds. Uh, I was, it was like 2 a.m. last night, so I, I, I stayed with just one. Uh, but you can have you know, a, a large sound, sound set. That is cool. All right. It's like a familiar uh, title to it. <coughs> yeah, it's uh, one of my favorite games. Yeah. But, uh, I have it on uh, Super Nintendo, but I can't get past the second screen. <laughs> it's awesome. So, uh, you know, I think we can program the Cocoa at a higher level and still produce some really performant software. Uh, we can use Docker to manage dependencies and use CMOC for programming. Uh, high level uh, libraries like uh, DinoSprite, uh, the more we create them, the more we document them and start using them, the more we can collaborate. And I, I think, especially with all of these things combined, uh, it really makes it easy for us to, uh, easier for us to put together uh, a lot more complex games, and I would be very happy if we could do this in a more collaborative setting, where you know we take you know all of the cool tools that everyone is developing, people's cool ideas, and put them into a single game. That would be cool. 
And uh, all my code is available on GitHub, so uh, <coughs> please uh, check, check it out, uh, give it a whirl. Should be super easy to compile on a Mac and Linux. I have not tested Linux. I really want to get it up and running on Windows. Uh, I don't have a Windows machine that I can uh, test against. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, questions? So would the, for example, systems that have a uh, various um, enhancements like the speech packer, yep. uh, et cetera, would those just be new additional libraries that you can compile in? Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I think that should be fairly straightforward. Uh, the way it works, I believe, is right now there's support for, um, uh, No, not the speech sound patch, but orchestra, orchestra, or orchestra 90. And so that gives like higher quality, uh, at least the 8-bit versus 6-bit sound, and probably gets rid of the you know, popping noise. Um, I, I think it, it would actually be really awesome to support some of the, the newer uh, music hardware in, in particular, and have the nice uh, background music yeah, kind of soundtrack. Uh, you know, when I was listening to uh, Steve's uh, demo back there with the uh, kind of creepy music and stuff, I was thinking, oh, this would be great for uh, or something like the uh, Ghosts and Goblins. Any other questions? Where, where, where do you disappear to in between uh, <laughs> popping up a, a new post for us and then you just disappear for months at a time? Work. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm at work a lot. Yeah. So, uh, you just uh, sneak in and drop something and disappear again. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really uh, wish I had more time to, uh, yeah. to do Coco stuff, but uh, I also awesome. love my work. So, uh, but uh, this this is my hobby. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, in case we do want to collaborate, you know, where should we essentially meet up? Do you have a forum or something that you prefer to discuss and talk about ideas on? Uh, I think a good place to start for me would be uh, just the, uh, the the Facebook page, okay. uh, GitHub. Uh, Which Facebook page? Place. So I, there, there are at least two, co well, no, three or four that I'm aware of on, on well, Facebook. TRS-80 Coco is the main one. There's a Tandy one, or it's like an OS9-ish one. Yeah, OS9. Uh, there's the... We're dividing the community. Well, it's, <laughs> there, there's so, so many people. Yeah, it's, 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 it's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, it's the main one's the TRS-80 Coco. Yeah, pr probably yeah. that's the, yeah. the best one, uh, j just, just to reach out. Uh, Again, I, 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 I interview. Yeah. So, what would be the best way to merge everyone's work? Like, are you gonna are you thinking of having like Docker files, like, I, for, like the manifest, right? I mean, I think getting people, getting everyone to use Docker is going to be the first big challenge, and I mean this from someone who struggled getting my head around Docker. Um, I, I think getting people first to the point where they can use something like Coco Dev, and I'm not necessarily advocating mine versus others, just to get everyone's uh, dependencies you know, in order. Um, I think that's the first thing. Uh, it does take adjustment to getting used to, to Docker. Um, I think once, once a development environment is defined for a given project, it's, it'll be a lot easier to move forward where developers say, okay, we're going to use this Docker file to, to build everything, and uh, it'll, it'll, it'll just work. For, for the uninitiated, yep. could, could you just give a capsule description of, of Docker and where it fits into the ecosystem? I mean, I, IT for me was a long time ago. And yep. I, I mean, I actually built physical servers. You know, that, okay. It was that long ago. So uh, maybe the best way to do it is a little demo if people don't mind. Sure. So, I mean, I've been playing with, there's a, an alternate project, Win CMOC, which kind of bundles everything together. And yeah. Like a basic IDE. Yep. But, you know, it's not up to date with the latest version of CMOC, and it, it's got some of those issues you talked about. It's like, okay, it's an older version of the CMOC compiler that's, you know, uh, there's been some bug fixes since then. Yeah. And so, it's built for Windows, but, you know, it's not the latest. And, you know, uh, the guy who did it, it's a really nice effort, but he doesn't maintain it. He's got other hobbies and stuff. So yeah, he, he disappeared. I, I definitely followed Win for a while, and I was really uh, 
blown away with how much he put together. Yeah. And I was uh, hoping that he'd be able to continue, but uh, right. you know, he it just kind of disappeared. It's been over a year, and it hasn't been updated. Yeah. Doc, Doc, Doc first, like the, the, like the next level was continued. Yes, yes. So, uh, are you? F uh, is everyone here familiar with things like uh, VMware or VirtualBox or things like that? Yeah. So they're they're just kind of you know different virtualization technologies. Uh, Docker is a lighter weight virtualization technology, and it's actually built on top of an operating system. And uh, the operating system gives you ways you can basically virtualize. Instead of virtualizing like everything, all you have to do is virtualize the, uh, the process environment that you expose to, to a given container. And uh, so on the Mac, uh, what, you know, Docker is all Linux based, and so on, on the Mac what happens is they actually do start up a hypervisor running Linux, but once you have that Linux kernel up and running, then you can start using other distributions, uh, assuming that you know they don't do any, uh, anything too, too crazy. So um, if we go to Coco. Let me just toss something there. I mean, like if you're familiar with VMware, you know, the, the image that you run is the entire operating system, right? Like a VMware for OS, or, or like a Windows 7 or Windows 10. And it's a complete copy of the operating <coughs> system. I mean, absolutely. So, I mean, it's like, it's essentially a physical machine. Right, you're running a physical machine in a virtual environment. Yeah. So yeah. a Docker container is just take away that operating system. So it's just, like, you would say, there's something called a Docker file, which is a text file. And you kind of say what you want in your... Docker image. That's fine. The minimum amount. So, so it, it, you kind of subtract the operating system, but you'd say, I'm going to need like standard lib for C. And I might want like the paint program on there for some reason. So you can kind of say what you want deployed into your Docker image. And that will run on top of the host operating system. So okay. So you don't, it's kind of like a light VMware image. So you can, in the Docker file, there's all the Docker command. So you fill up your text file, the Docker file, to say kind of what you want in there. And it builds it pretty darn quickly. And then you got that image. And I could, like Jamie said, I could give you that image. And it's going to work. You know. So if we start making these things. Docker is just one, one implementation of the Or is it built by the computer? It's one implementation. I guess there are other implementations, but uh, Docker has kind of taken off, and I'm not familiar with the other ones. Um, so, so here. If I may, just yep. um, simplify it you for those who have some Unix background. If you're familiar with the Unix concept of a sure rooted environment, so it used to be advocated for security, even though it's actually not a security thing. Anyway, a sure rooted environment. Kind of creates a, a fake root file system. Um, we can run applications with a different set of libraries and that sort of stuff. Essentially, a container is a, is a, uh, a rooted environment on steroids. Um, you can share more than just a file system. But anyway, in, in a very practical sense, in terms of how it's often used, it's really about this rooted file system environment where you uh, set up a different set of libraries. Of, uh, of applications. Is, does it actually intercept and and emulate? If you've got if you're trying if you try to make containers for different levels of the OS, when the OS calls them change, does it do that? Since you share a kernel amongst uh, containers, whatever operating uh, whatever system calls are provided by that kernel will be common across all the containers. So you can't so you can't say make this container be the minus one version of the operating system. Well, again, it's, I don't mean to split hairs. It kind of depends on what you define as the operating system. The operating system is, is the calls to, to IOs. So, so, so the basically. kernel defines that. The, kernel. the operating system also can encompass the system libraries and uh, and even system utilities. And yeah, it's sort of a, 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 a hypothetical discussion to some degree. Uh, um, like, like, like in Solaris, I think you could say this container is, OS, is Solaris 3, this container is Solaris 5, this container is Solaris 9. You can't 
can do you, you, can I do that with, with containers on Linux? You, you, you can. So, so you can have containers that are derived, derived from different so you can say distributions. So so for example so here I'm I'm running uh, Ubuntu fourteen and uh, it'll it'll just work. I can start up another one and so it can I, be I, sixteen. I set up container for I, if I'm running Ubuntu fourteen yep. and I want to set up a container for Debian something. I've got to download stuff from Debian to do that or is this uh, you can probably do that. I'm less familiar with the uh, Debian uh, ones, but uh, we can probably do something like or, or is Docker already copying those over? Uh, uh, Docker will copy it automatically over from uh, Docker Hub. So Yep. So uh, in this case, somebody uploaded a Debian image, and I don't I don't know what version because I I said just pull the latest. And so uh, now, if you do a uname a, uh, it's this version uh, here, and then we can do a uname a, it's a different version. Uh, probably not because the uh, uh, the, the yeah, kernel is ultimately it's shared. Yeah, it's all kernel based, yeah. so like if you have the Ubuntu or Debian in user space, but then everything else is not. Right, you're going to be limited to the kernel of the host operators. Right, but if I can do a Debian, pretend if I did a kernel, they don't, then there is some kernel in the way. Well, it's 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 the, the the assumption is that the Linux kernel is going to be fairly compatible from re release to release. So I I can imagine if you're doing something really weird, you will find things that will break. Uh, okay. But for the most part, for ninety percent of what what happens and what gets deployed on servers, um, it's it's a non-issue. Speaking of someone with some experience of how the kernel is developed, so the kernel the kernel system calls are widely the same. I tried installing it on several uh, people's laptops, and I was never successful. I it, it could be they be they do weird things on their laptops though. Yeah. So before saying oh it's it's does it's a Windows it, thing. Does it require the original hardware? hardware? Yes. I was just trying to figure out if it was a problem with your container or was the problem with the Docker installation. Yeah. I I think <coughs> this is not. You know, this is just grounded on a few data points. It's my understanding that Docker works better, uh, best on Linux, uh, on next on OS X, um, because there's there's this extra you, you know uh, you know bridge that they have to cross, and then less will less well on Windows just on well, personal you, experience. It's not often you've got to run the Linux kernel. Yeah, like you're running on Windows like 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 support. So yeah. Yeah, Mi Microsoft is pouring a lot of money into Docker, um, and so when you look at uh, all of the uh, Docker activity, a big chunk of it is to get it to work really well on, on Windows. And it's not just uh, virtualizing Linux, they also are virtualizing Windows. So hey, it's... Don't forget, Microsoft's office on Linux distribution. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Is that called Linux? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we switched to all this. Switch this stuff where I work, and um, yeah, everyone has a just a total pain in the butt getting it going on Windows. So there's some called Docker Toolbox, but then you got to go into the BIOS, and there's like Hyper V settings, and it's just a lot of messing around. And if you use a MacBook, Docker just works. Like when you just buy the, the MacBook, 
it's just yeah. natively yeah. supported. So it's just everything goes better on a Mac or a Linux box. So um, so anyway, uh, 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 for Coco Dev, what I do is I start from Ubuntu 16. Uh, it's not that I prefer it or not, it's just what I happen to, to use and know. Uh, there are probably more appropriate things, but Ubuntu works. Uh, you want to set up a lot of your base uh, dependencies and uh, uh, sources. So in this case, I'm pulling things from uh, different uh, repos. Uh, makes it easier to install uh, LWASM and CMOC. Uh, install lots of other tools that happen to be very useful for building uh, other things. Uh, lots of Cocoa specific stuff. I actually do install uh, GC, uh, GCC 6809. I've never been able to fully get it to compile like a hello world, which is why I prefer CMOC. Um, uh, lots of uh, Python tools used by things like um, uh, Dino Sprite and others. Um, uh, this is uh, Eric's tools uh, here, I believe. And uh, I copy and uh, compile uh, the CMOC uh, OS9 libraries that uh, Boise is working on. Uh, right now, uh, there was a breaking change uh, in s the latest CMOC. Uh, so I, I did a clone <coughs> of, uh, of uh, the library into my repo. Is uh, Boise here, actually? So uh, there, there, there's, there's a pull request that I, I hope he accepts because people are, are starting to clone off of my uh, my repo, which uh, would be better if they, they cloned his. Uh, there was some talk about uh, Java on the Coco, so I installed that as part of the uh, default yeah. image. I don't know much about it or how to use it. Uh, really uh, kind of curious. And then basically just clean up. Uh, so this gives you a sense of all the tools that are installed. Uh, I push this up to uh, Docker Hub, and so it's very easy to pull, and you'll get an exact snapshot of what I use. And you can actually build upon that image. So for example, on Dino Sprite, uh, I found out that I forgot to install s uh, certain things in this image, so I just created an, uh, another Docker image. Yep? To horribly simplify this, for my simple mind, you're, you're, you created a particular development environment, mm -hmm. which then everybody agrees you're basically on the same exact platform for common development. Yep. So it's pretty much guaranteed. You know, if, if you can get this running cleanly, then you can do development. It, it'll it'll just work. Par. Yep. And and it, same library. Yep. Go on. So both CMOC, I guess CMOC is under Linux that it works normally. Yes. And then the uh, DinoSprite is a Python uh, library, or is it? Uh, it's Python? it's. It's mostly written in um, uh, Python, and so it works best under uh, Linux. And uh, because I added CMOC dependencies, it's just a lot easier to keep everything on, on a single uh, Linux image. Um, and so, uh, d does that make sense? Yes. So in general, if I wanted to go directly to DinoSprite and, and not use CMOC, I could because I just have to program. Uh, well, the the programming that you'll do, you'll you'll be using Python tools, mm -hmm. but your programming will be in assembler. Oh, okay. So uh, CMOC, uh, the integration that I added will make it just easier for you to not use assembler or minimize your use of assembler. Um, but the 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 tool f the tooling is all built with Python. Um, so, and and this. Okay. Uh, I'm taking up a lot of time. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, one thing I want to show you, so uh, just because this project is using this development environment doesn't mean all projects have to use this development environment. Uh, people can use their own, uh, their own uh, Docker images that have their own things in it. So for, for example, my Dino Sprite is actually using a different image than uh, the image I'm using now because I, I needed to add some new things. And that's OK, because you can have multiple things co coinciding on the same computer. So for example, if I do this, uh, I'm using CMOC uh, uh, 0.1.51. But what I can do is uh, it's 
uh, branch tag. I'm going to check out an older tag. Uh, let's go to something really old. And uh, I have to, I don't have this image locally, so I'm pulling it from uh, uh, Docker Hub. And so just wait a second for it to download. And basically, you'll see it'll have a much older version of CMOC, and it won't have Java Grinder, and it, it'll be missing a whole bunch of other things as well. So uh, CMOC uh, one, 0 0.1.46. And this one is CMOX 0.1.51. So anyone can install whatever tools that they need, and that's OK, because uh, it's not going to impact other, other projects. Uh, when people are collaborating on a single project, they just have to agree, this is the Docker file that we're going to use for this project. Yep. So then once you've created your Docker image, mm -hmm. do you like bash into it? That's and then you edit source files within that image? So my preference is to actually just use the environment to, to build. And uh, testing, I go outside of the environment. Uh, so for example, I can't pop up like meme, uh, as far as I know, from, from Docker. Uh, uh, it may actually work on, on Linux, but it won't work on Mac. Um, Even editing, you edit outside of the environment? Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, so exactly. So just copy your C file into the Docker image? Uh, no, I, I, I use a volumes trick. So. There's one of the views of Docker that gives you options for managing the storage and such that you can hold it. Storage locations, uh, you know, like the So, uh, where is it? This one is, oh, actually. Dot net. So, here, what I do is uh, I'm basically running this uh, Docker Compose file, which is another abstraction that I, I don't want to get into yet. Uh, but basically, there's a volumes command here, and it allows me to map uh, my user's directory to a user's directory uh, on, on the image. And uh, so, in that way, uh, things get live updated in the Docker environment, and I don't have to worry about stuff accidentally getting lost. Um, that, that's the worst thing is, you know, when you edit something in a Docker image and you delete it, and... So you just actually have like a file system mounted? Yeah. Back yeah. It's, it's actually a really nice uh, thing to do. You, you know, even beyond Cocoa, uh, you know, when you're doing like website development, it's easier to to you know, mount a volume that has your source code, and uh, then your Docker image can automatically like update uh, uh, to reflect the changes. Very cool. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. Awesome.